I am so excited for you uh, because you are a guest judge and hopefully a future permanent judge. Guest shark, by the way. Uh, uh, right, the right, shark. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah shark. I was lectured about that very yeah. early. No, these are the it's things I want to know. It's extensive contract. I had to make sure I use the right terms. But out of all the sharks, you like actually are a business person. Like Mark Cuban and you actually have day jobs. Yeah. yeah. What was your favorite thing about being a shark? Oh, I love that. Um, so... Let me talk existential. Yeah. yeah it, uh, it I liked the fact that it was a reach. That um, for me, it didn't come natural. It wasn't second nature. I've never been on a TV show before. I'm not. That's not generally how I see myself. So it was uncomfortable. Um, also was stressed out about going on national TV being very overweight, if I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah. So the effort to lose a lot of weight so I didn't have to look at Netflix for the next 20 years and see myself. Uh, that was hard. That's my problem. Um, but I would say, all kidding aside, um, those moments in life where you really have to transcend are great and they're hard to do and they're stressful and then you regret doing it on the eve of doing it and then when you did it you're grateful and almost sad that it's over so running a marathon for me there were a lot of other moments in my life becoming the mayor's press secretary going on shark tank was one of those moments so i love that and then um getting to know the other sharks right they're they're aggressive but i took the approach of i'm not going to pretend like i've been here all these years right this is not uncomfortable i'm gonna illuminate in a humble in a humble way and say give me give me some advice and laurie grenier was amazing mark uh, damon everybody gave me advice and kind of wanted me to be successful until the lights were on and then they didn't care but (laughs) right exactly (laughs) and the last part i would say is if i had gone on that show and found out it wasn't exactly what i thought it was it'd be like finding out there's no santa claus when you're five you know yeah i'd be worried about that yeah i love the show so much and yeah. then um, the reality is, it's just an elongated version of what you see every uh, every Sunday, Episode. and incredibly authentic. You know, to the point that I hadn't thought about processing valuations on the fly without like an abacus or something as, right. as you're competing. And um, everything about the show was authentic. So I guess those three things. That's really cool. Now, talk about transcendental moments. Mm-hmm. One of mine happened there okay. when I first started building my brand. Justin, who's behind that camera, we're Not walking. Justin. We went to go see Tannenbaum. And we're walking in the concourse, and this kid jumps over the uh, the uh, concessions, yeah. jumps over the counter, and runs at me. And I thought, hey, I didn't steal anything. <laughs> like, I literally, and he literally is like, oh my god, Mr. Meltzer, I've seen your videos. Oh, that's and awesome. it was awesome for the, for the first time in my life. And that's going to happen to you. I don't want that to happen. It's that's going to happen. Freaking me out. It's going to happen, right? <laughs> really? What is that going to feel like, too? Because it freaked me out. Half of me, like the humble side, I didn't want to tell anyone, and it freaked me out. But there was this side of me that called my wife immediately. I'm like, oh my God, somebody recognized me. I don't know how that's going to feel. You know, I spent a lot of time with Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. You can't walk three steps yeah. without that happening. So I know that won't happen. Right. Um, we hope. Well, I hope. Yeah. I'm, I'm counting on it. I'm only I, on I live f- my life hoping that does never happen to me. I'm only on a few times. The part that, I, that does get me excited, and like you, I have something I want to say, and I'm getting more comfortable saying it. Yeah. And I like the idea of having a platform where I can begin to share my message of transcendence, and people will be maybe just a little more likely to listen because of what the show means. Uh, so I went to a homeless shelter last week with my staff talking to I teenagers, right? And uh, awesome. it was amazing. They, I, was, I went to a room with a bunch of kids. Um, they've been in the shelter for two or three weeks. They have decided to enroll in this program to get a GED, trying to get a job. So I stand up and a bunch of them make comments like, oh, you look like money and, <laughs> and you know, you're a CEO and all that. I said, oh yeah, what else do you think about me? Oh, you come from a great family. You come from all this. So I said, okay, well, let me tell you about my story. And I told them about um, GED and one of the kids started crying. And wow. it just blew me away. Yeah. Right, and then where you come from. Yeah. Um, does that come across when you're with billion? You're with these billionaires right. on that show. Do you feel billionaires like, and hundred millionaires? Yeah, but do you feel <laughs> giving Mark Cuban his? Yeah, yeah. yeah escalated. Yeah. Uh, but do you feel different? You know, it's interesting because we get to rub elbows with those bees right. a lot, and you know, and I'm still that Akron, Ohio, six kids, single mom guy. But there's a half of me that still I'm processing, going, I knew I was as smart as you. Right. Right, I, I knew, and I, and, and I might have been going about it the wrong way when I was young and projecting my insecurity and hyper aggressive and competitive to prove it. Yeah. But it, to me, there's like this sense, even on my show with what I do and you know the Piper Jeffrey, and I'm like, you know what, man, you were like the head of Piper Jeffrey for all those years, 
And sometimes I'm like, why would you invest in Zap <laughs> Steel? Like for me, I'm like, I knew I could play in this game. So you're saying that feeling of like, is Belonging. it, is it like, awe or acceptance? Acceptance for or me. Is it defiance a bit? Oh, uh, like, maybe a combination. I'm thinking it's like a res- resolution of, you know, maybe like when you're an athlete and you n- never know if you're good enough to play and then you get to start at quarterback and you win the game. Yeah, that I did have when I, when I did it. Yeah. And I felt like I had done well enough. Right. right. Well, you represented. About, I represented. I did okay. Yeah. That felt good. I do think so since because from a very young age, I've been around power and speaking truth to power because I had a skill set when I'm talking about when I was press secretary. Yeah. Right? So I was 26 years old and I was press secretary to the mayor of New York talking to the police commissioner. And the so you didn't think you were faking it? No. So in that arena, wow. I think my issue is that I never quite feel like things are okay. You know, there's... You're paranoid. Like, uh, yeah. I don't know, paranoid or just, you know, not perfectly balanced. <laughs> like, yeah. so for me, it's a little bit maybe disconnected from it. Like, hey, I mean, you're you're in the middle of this. Instead, I go right to the, you know, to the next thing. But but I don't, I don't think I ever felt like I didn't quite belong in that stage. It's I'm always looking to the next stage. It's interesting because a lot of guys that are successful still feel like they're faking it. Yeah. But and the, I, imposter, I, the imposter syndrome is real. I, w- I was that kid, you yeah. know, 25 year old million air or and everyone i just i, I literally i thought i'd be fired every week I, right. i'm like are they gonna find me out right. um, and i've come into my own that i'm very confident that it's not the money I, i'm very confident in my ideas yeah like and it, it, it holds value to me and i think that's why it's resonating and i and i hope this happens for you because I love your ideas, right? <laughs> you right? No, I do. I, I love the way it always turns into a therapy session with you. It's like, good. What's wrong with me? Why can't I? Well, your I'm going to have to start. <laughs> Would you like to sign up for my coaching yeah, program? Yeah, no, I really do. Can you I, afford I, it? I, I may I'll borrow trade, money from you. That's fine. Yeah. I'll no, give you credit. Uh, no, imposter syndrome is real. And I talk to CEOs about this all the time and, and, and leaders. And then uh, also, um, What's interesting is if you're not forgiving and charitable of an accepting of yourself, you won't be that way with employees and colleagues. So it's really important that you work on that and you recognize that you've done great things, you do deserve it, because you won't cut anybody else a break, right? It's just it's just obvious and logical. So awesome. I, I think I'm better with that. I don't have any of that right now. It's more um, I don't think I take enough time to reflect, hey, this is this is pretty special what you've accomplished. I'm always focused on the next mission. And besides that, there's one more thing I want to touch yeah. on because I, I was telling you about this Cartman's drama, this triangle. Right. And the one thing that my big takeaway for the two weeks, I got like new takeaways every two weeks, yeah. is that the rescuer is a victim. Okay. And you're a rescuer. I am a rescuer. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> right? And, yeah. I, you know, I know we called it a therapy session. Do you see the rescuer, when you're a rescuer, do you see how with resentment and voids and shortages that it causes that you actually can be a victim as a rescuer? Because it took me a while to process, because I'm a rescuer, I feel responsible for everyone. Yeah. And it stems from my relationship with my mom and my siblings and money. Do you, do you see, when I tell you that, you're, that that is true, can you see how? Do you have to process that? I could see how, if your whole identity gets wrapped up in being a rescuer, you can easily neglect the self, right? Like that you don't yeah. invest enough time. Um, but. It's a balance. I like being the rescuer, so I'm not. I'm not going to have a problem. I think there's magic and transcendence. I always think if I had a book, I would call it "Butterflies Being Born." That anybody has a butterfly inside them, and it doesn't matter if you're yeah. crazy famous or you're that kid at the homeless shelter. And I enjoy the act of cultivating transcendence. So selfishly, it's kind of like a hobby. My rescue is always in one particular area. But I'm trying to unlock arbitrage in a person. And so I get as much joy and ego gratification from that as, as that I'm giving. So in those situations, I don't feel like a, a victim. But you do have a part of you that has this need for you, right? Everybody. Like, no, no, like beyond, beyond saving everyone, mm-hmm. there's still this Matt side of you that, like, losing weight to get on the show and you look terrific. Yeah, thank right? you. And the show itself created this freedom that you've never felt before, these options yeah. that it gives you. There's a, there's a different lifestyle on TV. Yes. And when you came back to the real world, there was a transition. There was. There was a, a little dip, Right, there's yeah, a letdown. Yeah, yeah. Can you see how to make that connection or bridge? Because I believe in infusing purpose and mirroring situations or energy of situations into my real life. So I have the same type of experiences. I walk out, like even today, like not to blow smoke up your rear. Please There's do. certain meetings, like I'll walk out of here going, can you believe I get paid to do this? Like, <laughs> I, like this is my Jesus life, God. cool guys. You no. should go on the internet yeah. talk to people about all these kinds of things. But no, it's true. <laughs> like, do you ever feel that way? I, like, can't you infuse purpose into I can, to so, your... so the autonomy is desired so I can be more of who I am all the time. So the fusing would be, 
just going deeper to who you really are more often, right? We all have a degree of suppressing who we are sometimes because we got to do this, that, and the other thing. It's yeah. just a better life when you can be uh, you know, autonomous and authentic all the time. So that's a simple objective. And I think the show and everything I'm doing gives me a freedom to talk more about what's in my heart and in my soul, my purpose. I promise this is the last thing. That, no. conversation. I wouldn't be doing this unless I was right. out there on Shark Tank. We're having this philosophical conversation with you. But it's cool. And that's great, right? I'd love to talk about this all day long and hopefully help somebody out there it's interesting because this is gonna be the last thing i promise I'm gonna gonna okay good um i was with gary yeah. our, our mutual mentor friend um and i was talking about that exact point how it's so free and that i'm able to you know tell the truth about my bankruptcy and my failures and this is a great platform to, to be truthful with myself yeah um but yet gary's response which i loved how are you gone down the path of why you fucked up? Or yeah. Why I fucked up? Long way. If I can give you the, like, I, I believe that when something like that happens, that it's extremely difficult to go all the way. You can go to 99, but that yeah. last one percent of why it happened, like some of the real non-noble things you did. Oh yeah. You yeah. Do, like the yeah. Real I'm an illuminator, so I get it. If you can really get that out, that's the ultimate advantage. Yes. That will change. You will go from here. And, but, but first and the closer, be, right? And the closer yeah. I get to it, so I believe the truth vibrates the fastest. And only you, to be aware. Right, you've been chipping away, and right? I'm chipping yeah. away. I'm getting, okay. and, me, and it resonates with people. People say you're so correct. Like when I speak, right? Because I talk about it. Yeah. But, but you and I both know that I'm still there's, not at the truth. You can't be. You're human. It takes. It took nine you're years human. to get. It took me nine years you're to get we're back. There's eleven there's, stories that are in there that nobody knows. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's just But. Every time you get one more out, a little, yeah, exactly. Forget about feeling better. Yeah. Which is absolutely true. Yeah. It makes you bigger. Yeah. And stronger. And you vibrate faster. Right? And, and it struck me at a court. I'm thinking, oh, thanks a lot. I've made all this progress. Yes, you know, I've told everybody in person that I'm a loser and I've lost all this money and, and I'm re right. But yeah. so recently I was uh, with Sugar Ray Leonard on my podcast and he told me how Todd Bridges was on. Uh, Oprah. By the way, Sugar Ray, on your, he looks so good. Man. He's so good. I, like, is the man not age? I saw him on your podcast. Crazy. Like, Only boxer know. I've ever had that says I don't ever want to hurt anyone. Yeah. Like, even when he boxed, I'm like, really? how can you be a boxer and not want to hurt someone? Mike Tyson told me he wanted to kill people yeah. and he meant it. Like Ray Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> like he, but, you know, he, he said that Todd Bridges encouraged him because he talked about being abused. Mm -hmm. And then he came out of being abused. Well, I was abused when I was young. And on that show, I, I literally just started tearing and I'm like, you know what? Sorry, but yeah, it, it, it is, but it was so freeing. And all I could think of was Gary going, you mother, you know there's so much more. Like, and I get, went home and I love my wife more than anything because this is a bit of me. She, she knew, right? Yeah. I, I've told her. So I came home, she goes, how was the sugar rate thing? I'm like, I can't believe it. In public, I told everybody I was abused when I was a little boy. Yeah. And she goes, oh, that's good. Anyway, like for her, I'm like, no, no, this was like a moment for me. Right. Like, I'm a, I'm a hero. I'm courageous. How many layers do you think there is in Matt that, that you're not? I know there's tons in me oh, still. That's a good question. Like, how many layers in you do you think we're, we're still, that you're I suppressing? Because I know I have a lot. If it was an onion, we're only probably at the first layer. You know, still. I think, yeah. Because yeah. the part that I, what I always wanted was um, that my success to be pronounced enough that the juxtaposition from where I started to where I am right now would really resonate and enable me to tell the story, right? So yeah. I'm at that layer. When I go to the homeless shelter and I talk to these kids, for whatever reason, prior to Shark Tank, I felt like there wasn't anything about my success that would be enough to reach somebody at that stage. But because everybody loves Shark Tank. TV and the show, right? And it's the sort of the pinnacle of the entrepreneurial journey, those kids pay attention. Now I could reach them and they walk out of the room like, I'm not making it up. I got my GD. I got left back three years in a row. I grew up in abject poverty, right? Like yeah. none of this is, is, is exaggerated. You can do it. Maybe you don't have to do that. And the fact that when you do eventually reach a certain level of success, where you began becomes almost an asset. It becomes a weapon. Like right. I, I was talking to this kid and I was saying, you understand when you interview as a job, the fact that you were homeless now, people want to root for you. Like you just got to, you know, put your best foot forward and you can land that job. To me, I feel like until I did this for whatever reason, I didn't feel like the story was that interesting. Like I didn't have enough credibility. That's I know so, that's crazy, but no, it's that's cool though. Because well, and whether that's true or not doesn't matter. The show itself resonates, and now I think my message will connect more, and and I love that. So, 
back to your question, the onion is only at the first layer. Wow. Well, if you keep having these conversations, we're like the second. Everything. I have to get emotionally ready to sit with you. It's Sorry. Like, I don't want to give you resistance. No, I had a therapist until we met, and then I was like, there's no point. <laughs> I'm cheaper. You're cheaper, <laughs> right? You bring me coffee. And yeah. Then, then you bring, I pet like, your shark. But you do it on camera, which is like, because then I got to look at it. Yeah. But, uh, well, at least but, you look no, good. It speaks to why you're magical, though, and oh. why you're special. So more people need to hear what you have to say. Like, you need to reach more people. That's awesome. And you need to tell your story about what happened to you. As a boy, because or through me, right? yeah. yeah. So, I mean, right, and that's what's cool, right? Is if we get to a confident enough stage because we've had a certain exactly, level of success, safe, right? yeah, we're, we're safe. safe. Because yeah. you like, I always have this backup that I could tell you because people really love me. Yeah. Right. Right. And it's weird. And before you would never say it because I didn't feel like enough people would love me and understand. But if I said it before, there might be some other kid that feels the same way that says, "Hey, this is a really smart, successful, nice person." And he overcame that. That's so great. My wife right? has always given me stuff because I can be very antisocial. I've been <laughs> sitting in an event for a very long time. But the reason why is I feel like there's this layer to the universe that goes unrevealed and that we all have these struggles and then we kind of conceal them or shameful. And you sit down at the table and there's a veneer and I just wish that the world would have more room to accommodate that. And my yeah. wife always says, not everybody's as tortured and struggling as right. like, the most are. <laughs> right, so, almost everyone. So what you do on camera and what I feel like I can have a platform to do is tell the story. So that kid who went through whatever went through really does believe like, oh, I can transcend. And for whatever reason, it's where I want to spend my time. Or even adults. I don't know if it makes me a rescuer. Yeah. Or even a, adults, though. Yeah, yeah, you're like, right. Because sugar free, I mean, sugar ray, free me. Yeah, you know, yeah. he, he encouraged me because he was kind of like a hero to me, and I'm like, why do you think you never told the story publicly? Yeah, I, I think I was, I was afraid, like literally afraid that so, somehow it made me shame. Like I still made really, myself a victim, but, but, but it's I can't, true. I can't like I did, I blacked it out. Mm -hmm. Like until into my twenties, like I didn't, I didn't think about it. I didn't, and then all of a sudden I was like, because the relative that whatever right was not that old right like early 20s and in my mind it was like mm, okay that's just par part of i'm like wait a second that's abuse yeah but to what you yeah. just said about blocking it out when i when we were doing this mentoring session right here i'm talking to this 19 year old kid and it looks like almost like a bomb went off in his face like you could imagine underneath that like what his journey would have been but underneath it this beautiful charismatic smile and i asked him a question i said um you know pretending to do an interview. Okay, tell me about your hobbies. What do you love? And he sort of paused and looked away. And I was like, oh, it's not a hard question, right? And he goes, I don't have any. I don't, I don't have anything. I don't love anything. He goes, and I was like, well, why do you think that day? Because when you're, when you grew up with what I grew up since I was a kid, around eight years old, like, like I just had no ability to develop that. I just was trying to survive. And it's like, wow, that is really Whoa. interesting. Really that is what cry. happens when you have trauma. Like yeah. you don't really develop those interests and in, in cultivate it. So yeah. to your point about blocking it out, I think it's a similar type of response to, to suffering. Yeah, that you the just, pain. It just gets buried. You don't even remember it got buried, yeah. which is why I'm talking about it is important because you didn't know it was buried in the first place. But even though it's buried, it's still operating upon you. Even though you, the fact that you never talked about it, even though you probably feel like you've dissected yourself, I'm sure in some ways it's affecting you that hasn't been processed. Oh, yeah. I thought mommy so issues. I thought mommy issues still. Do you? Yeah, yeah. I think we all do. Yeah. Everybody watching this has those. I do. I would do this anytime, <laughs> brother. Such a good guy. Oh, Keep doing what you're please doing. Please call me. Right. I want to see you more. Watch Shark Tank. It's Watch Shark Tank. My favorite shark. My favorite shark. Oh, thank you. There we go. Awesome.